like it. Right, we live again. Good afternoon. So let's let's move on with take uh, taking the report backs. What I what I'm going to do in this session is I'm going to start with the virtual group feedback because I see that uh, Emeritus Professor Jim Taylor has uh, uh, provided some input, uh, which I think is quite relevant to our discussions that we are, are having this afternoon. So around the list of proposals for strategic objectives for 2018 to 2020, uh, Jim's recommendation is that we should prioritize the consolidation and evaluation of the free first year of study and associated exit awards prior to allocating resources for the second and third year offerings. Uh, under the major trends, uh, Jim's suggestion is to explore how OERU might achieve, lead uh, achieve a leadership role in transnational micro-credentialing and the issue of uh, associated badges. Uh, the major initiative suggested by Jim for the next planning cycle to complete the process evaluation and then initiate an, an analytics product project, um, which is, of course, leading then through onto the product evaluation. Review and update the open business model to include the potential deployment in mainstream institutional operations of not only OERU open courseware, but also the OERU open source technology infrastructure. So, I mean, Jim has a tongue in cheek, so to speak, has suggested the six R in the uh, five R framework, and that is to replicate open source technology. And the last suggestion there is to pri prioritize student support initiatives, including enhancing the student support site through the trialing of peer to peer EU learning circles and refining and implementing Academic Volunteers International. So I just, I just wanted to put that on the table. Uh, Jim Taylor's contributions, who also serves on our um, board of directors. So if I could, Naza, do you, do you want to facilitate the, is, or is Naza, oh, here we go. The feedback session. Yeah, you're gonna make, oh, if you want me to do it, come here. Yeah, you must come whip these people into action. <laughs> so let me do it in the order that we have the files. Uh, so the consultation on, yeah, that would be Roy's do. So. Rory, you're going to be called to the microphone by NASA. Okay, Rory. To the report? To the report, the reporting. Oh, no, I'm not, rep I don't do the report. Ah, you are, Jenny? Report. Jenny is doing reporting. Sometimes, you know, volunteering to take notes means you get to decide, make some of the decisions, which is fine. <laughs> um, so we, we went a roundabout way looking at all the goals and had a variety of things that went into each goal and they're listed here, so I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, oh, sorry. I keep thinking that this is a microphone and it isn't in the room. Um, so we felt strongly that the, that the first year pathways were, and so first year and second year were strongly in place. Many institutions have full programs that are ready to go. So we weren't as concerned about that and strategic planning. Um, a couple of thoughts. One was that um, might OERU consider positioning itself as a source of liberal arts qualifications alongside other degrees as one uh, method of finding our audience. Um, we talked about third and fourth year courses and available open resources, and we thought that we would start to be, we'd be beginning to get into trouble finding resources for those courses because they tend to be seminar-based courses, right, in most institutions. So general studies, probably not too difficult, but if you were trying to build degrees in more niche topics, maybe more difficult. Um, and this comes up a couple of times, identifying the workflow for converting courses from Sailor to OERU courses because three or four years ago there were not as many open fully open courses available as there are now and maybe thinking through a workflow strategic workflow for converting those courses uh, in a way that makes sense 
for goal two, um, talking about improving processes for efficiency. Um, again, related to that idea of, of finding a low-hanging fruit and courses that are already fully developed that are open, um, setting up a discipline advisory committee to review courses and, and point us toward those courses that are higher quality. Goal three, achieving a fiscally sustainable and scalable. Um, so we determined that, that one of the important parts of a strategic plan is, is checking in carefully with partner satisfaction uh, with the process. Are the partners satisfied with, with the traffic, uh, with their pricing structures, things like that? Um, promoting the success of partner universities. So ensuring that there is um, a publicity plan in place that says, here's the amazing work that's happening at the, at the partner institutions and how can we make sure we make that visible to other institutions who should feel bad they're not doing it. Um, and brand value, if you're very successful and you're being promoted well, that really helps your brand value. Um, we talked about learner lobbying. Um, we talked about a little bit on the ground learners at institutions that already exist. But we also thought, is there a process for learner lobbying to their governments to say education is too expensive? Um, an example is South Africa, where the student voice and student power is very strong. Um, I think that's also true in Quebec here in Canada. We have had some very interesting things happen in Quebec here in Canada in terms of student voice uh, lobbying the government. So that's maybe one opportunity. Uh, and then for goal four, we talked about a few um, types of innovations. Um, one of which we call a pon an education Ponzi scheme, where we, we develop a course called instructional design for uh, open courses, and then we get them to actually convert some of the Sailor courses to OERU courses as their project, uh, and also to get a course in mentoring online, teach students how to mentor online, especially graduate students, uh, and then get them to mentor online. So some of the kind of innovative ways that we could um, increase the support level of the courses for OERU, especially again as we get into third and fourth year courses where some of that feedback is actually going to be human feedback. Um, Rory um, extolled the virtues of machine graded essays as, well. <laughs> as one possibility when we start to talk about those third and fourth year courses. So. Um, and we had a few other recommendations, and I would leave that to readers to kind of to kind of think through and add to, right? So there are things to be added in the, in our extra recommendations as well. Just one comment: this is for information. The recommendation for learners to get engaged in helping to convert. Sailor courses for the OVRU platform. We actually do have a full OVRU course, Digital Skills for Collaborative OVR Development, which actually teaches those skills. So that's, we can check that box. Cool. But is it one that people can take? Absolutely. Yeah. The three credits, which university is recognizing it? A target polytechnic will be able to issue transcript credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So another group? Is it marketing? I don't know which one is marketing next one. Oh, this is a good question. Major trends. Oh. David. <laughs> so if Jim's listening online, micro credentials was at the top of the list for emerging trends here. But there were as many variations on meaning of micro-credentials around the table as there were people. And so we really believe that we need a, some kind of con crosswalk concept and language to describe what we mean within OERU for micro-credentials. One of the things that came out of it was that if you make um, individual component units stand alone, you have to think about whether you're going to add assessment to them at that level so that they're actually a takeaway at a credit level. And that actually makes more work. So people were concerned about that workload around the table. I'll just go through the other issues. Uh, authentic assessment was the next one that we begin to explore other kinds of assessment like case studies and questions 
that might be useful for students. And the Australian e-assessment project and the work that it's done, the peerwise model of students building uh, items for assessment on which they're assessed on the items they create rather than the answers they give. That kind of uh, thinking was part of what we would consider an emergent trend. I got everyone stirred up by the term Uberize. <laughs> and what kinds of Uberize trends could we think about with respect to the notion of tutorial support via handheld app? Is there something students could do to get tutorial support on demand? And one of the models that was posed is a model that's been used here in Ontario and in British Columbia that is organized by libraries, and it's called Ask Away in British Columbia and Ask On Here, where each library contributes hours to students asking questions via apps and uh, other, uh, it's actually uh, almost like a chat mechanism. And the same for uh, essay support using a system called Right Away. We talked about game-based learning and thinking about embedding some examples of gamification in our courses. If we're really going to walk the talk around OERU not only providing access but being state of the art at the same time, we actually have to talk about some of these approaches. Uh, it even got into simulations and VR, AR, Google Cardboard, all of these things were mentioned. Um, but we realized that sometimes students don't have the end user equipment that might be required to take the most benefit from those. However, we saw student generated content as a real possibility, especially around image and video collection that might be useful as uh, components of courses. And we thought there were ways that students could contribute back from their various locations. Uh, we saw that open educational resources are going big time right now, and the feedback from everywhere is that OER is here to stay. It's come of age. It's past its teenage years. But there are some real curation needs uh, around assembling collections, and one of the ideas was to talk to Sailor about identifying 10 or 15 courses that might be the ideal components of OERU courses so that we're not dealing with a collection of hundreds of courses but only 10 or 15 at a component based level that we could work with. We talked about uh, blockchain authentication as part of a transfer and authentication network and how that might be thought about going forward and since we're into transnational accreditation it seems to fit, uh, fit the bill. We talked about internationalization, interculturation, and indigenization as features of courses that OERU might uniquely differentiate itself with. We talked about a Bachelor of General Studies with an international stream um, that could, and an intercultural stream that went with it. We talked about experiential learning and uh, ways of preparing students to be digital nomads in the future, giving them the skills and the tools to be lifelong learners, and that we make that part of the OERU uh, approach. Um, we also talked about that in the, in the context of free range learning, the stuff that Dave talked about with many of the tools yesterday. Um, we talked about the need for uh, us to rethink what we mean by teaching and learning in the 21st century and uh, the kinds of uh, ideas that we think about as uh, a community of learners and really put that into practice around OERU. We talked a bit about the power of student advocacy and the notion that we need to be co-creators and uh, recognizing of the uh, knowledge of everyone and what students may also bring to the table or bring to the keyboard. Uh, let's see, there's a whole bunch of things. The power of professional collaboration and advocacy. Uh, the notion that when you come to a meeting like this, you're very empowered, you take it back, it helps you situate some great arguments with your colleagues on your own home campus. But there was also that dissipation effect. You went away really upbeat and then it kind of gets worn away as you get back into the daily routine. We need to find some way of building the network to continue to support that 
feeling beyond an annual meeting. That's about it. It was a big list. Um, we talked about, uh, where did we go after that? Yeah, you can see about curated collections of modularized components. We see that as the real need moving forward. It's like uh, many hands make light work, lowering the pain for gain threshold, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that will be what, no gold star. Uh -huh. oh, the award ceremony comes later. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and David, you're no, chairing the you're chairing the award ceremony, so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're skipping three, yeah? <laughs> You, yeah? That's, I think that's you. Sure. We don't need to be in the document. Uh, session four notes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so you won't even have to scroll after that. Okay, um, so what we don't yet have is the marketing and communications brief, but that's okay. Um, we... Uh, discussed and brainstormed coming up with a new learner focused elevator pitch uh, something for uh, print collateral as well as you know informing the digital collateral um, change your life's course one course at a time begin your degree at higher learning institutions from all around the world start for free start today um, we discussed creating personas from questionnaire data uh, as well as other data that we'll see later on in there. So analytics is listed further down there. Uh, but creating learner personas um, to, uh, just refreshed. All right. Uh, creating learning personas, uh, learner personas from uh, questionnaire data uh, that we can use to create the marketing brief. Um, set a timeline of by November 1st, uh, collecting questionnaires or collecting questionnaire data if uh, readily available, especially the um, quantitative data that comes off that, to determine a reasonable timeline for creating personas. And uh, also uh, the PhD candidates that were mentioned that are doing research, if they have, depending on what they're looking at, if they're looking at stuff that will be relevant to marketing in the marketing brief, uh, we'd certainly love to hear what they've found out from analyzing bits and pieces. Uh, we have emails and we are collecting more emails. So start a lead nurturing email uh, program to announce the first year of study. Um, timeline would be starting about eight weeks before the first course lands to send out initial emails and, and begin um, getting those people in the communications pipeline for that. Uh, sending a reminder email three weeks before the first course. Uh, so back to personas, evaluating analytics as well to the extent that we can um, from simple to more complex to decide, you know, who's coming, who's sticking around, um, how can we begin to decide how to sort those. So, you know, the personas are going to be good to determine um, marketing information, uh, digital and or print, but it's also going to be really good to determine uh, audiences and think about how we want to approach those people and what strategies we would use to get in touch with those people. So, you know, reaching out um, through press releases, pitches to media, um, Google AdWords, the website, whatever it might be. Uh, so the timeline on looking at analytics is to be determined uh, to the extent that someone is available to help or inform on that. We will take that help. Um, work on marketing content for learners on the website. So especially we discussed graphics that would uh, help students and prospective uh, students, learners, uh, decide how to apply, how to register, how to build a credential, inform them about the existence and use of micro-credentials. And circling back to our budget for AdWords as a <laughs> nonprofit, uh, there's $10,000 of essentially free money to spend on AdWords. And we would consider uh, outsourcing 
creation or management of that to an agency depending on on cost and it depends on you know how what we would decide the value is of of paying someone to you know what what amount of that are we willing to spend or what amount are we willing to spend to leverage the free ten thousand um, dollars So the timeline for that, again, TBD, we'd wait until the marketing brief is ready, which is going to be a bit, uh, so we can determine geographic areas to target and write a press release to announce the first year of study launch. And timeline on that is waiting for a marketing brief as well. Is that pretty good? Does that cover we talked about? Okay. Way to go. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Thank you very much. So in terms of um, David's um, point about, you know, retaining the momentum and the passion, I, my request right now is if you've got a computing device, is to go to chat.oeru.org, chat.oeru.org, and create an account. That's an open source alternative to Slack. chat.oeru.org, and you should, I, I think they do provide a, a, a Gmail uh, rego option as well. Yep. And Twitter. And Twitter, yes. Yeah, so, and you can create your own account. Okay, so I mean, so that's you know just an online space. If you've got a question or you want to connect, just post there. We do a very good job of monitoring those forums. You know, pretty much in daylight hours, that's how uh, Dave and I communicate. So if you want to get hold of us and you know have a have a conversation or whatever, that's the best place to do it. Um, you know, they're different. You know, we might need to set up a new channel or whatever, but that's fine. It's a good place to connect with us. The other thing which I will do is we are shifting all our communications over to the discourse platform, even for the OERU communications. Uh, to date, we've been using onlinegroups.net, which is a, a standard email list, uh, an open source alternative to. Oh, okay. Um, because you've got another keyboard, right? We're shifting all our communications onto the discourse platform. We previously used onlinegroups.net, which is an open source alternative to uh, Google Groups. Uh, it served us well to date, uh, but it's data technology. Uh, we need to move to a more modern platform. What I will do is I will send out invitations to each of the attendees of this meeting uh, which you'll receive in your inbox. Uh, if it happens to land in your spam folder, just check your spam folder. But that you can join that uh, that group. Now you don't. You can set your email notifications. Uh, you know whether you want to receive email notifications or not. Those are entirely your settings. But we're going to be migrating all our communications onto that single platform, um, which is just going to be a lot better, particularly for folk that are working across multiple groups. Uh, it's it's extremely hard to you know communicate with an email list system when people are working across multiple groups. So it's better just to have one platform, one site where these communications uh, can sit, uh, and then you decide how and where you want to engage. So you'll receive an email uh, getting that invite. We we prefer an opt-in system. We don't we never force anybody to join anything. Uh, so it's all, with the OER Foundation, it's always an opt-in system. So if you don't opt in, I might send one reminder, uh, but sending two reminders uh, is typically a sign that people don't want to be on the list, and that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So the process is we will take all this information, we'll prepare a draft strategic plan for 2018-2020, uh, we'll circulate it, We'll invite feedback. 
we'll finalize the plan and we will inevitably take a decision at the CEO's meeting around that decision-making process. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Big thank you to everyone for uh, coming to the conference. Uh, they're all literally energizing and productive. And, uh, I share Jim's uh, feeling that we need to get the product out there in 2018 and that we have a successful launch and that we attract sufficient numbers of students that we really begin to model the process about what OERU is about. I want to thank our hosts, uh, Naza and her team from the Chang School of Continuing Education for hosting us here at Ryerson. Really helpful to have a great venue in the downtown core. Uh, wish all of you great success and safe travels home. Uh, hope a bunch of you are staying for ICDE next week, and so we'll probably connect again over beers or snacks. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us here in Toronto. It has been eCampus Ontario's pleasure to host the sixth annual meeting of OERU Partners. Thank you. So we got one meeting. Oh, that's right. So we always save the announcement of the venue to the very last, in part to keep folk here, right? Um, and, and so I'd like to ask Valerie just to come forward for a moment. So, I'm not here to invite you to TRU, although a year or two ago I would have been, but today I'd like to invite you to come to Port Macquarie. Who knows where Port Macquarie is? Good. Well, a few hands. It's a fabulous spot. It's about an hour's flight from Sydney. It's also accessible from Brisbane. It's even accessible from Wagga Wagga. And it's right, just, it's right on the beach. Just a sec. Where's the, the thingy? There's the thingy. I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. So this is um, just a little bit about, you know, this just shows you the campus. It's a little bit of a, a sales pitch, if you will. But what, um, what it doesn't, sh what these slides I don't think, sh okay, what these slides um, don't show you um, is the Australians love of really good coffee. They are a real coffee culture, as well as craft beer and excellent wine. It's a gorgeous site. There's beach, warm weather, which thinking of those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, November 7, 8th and 9th, rain, cold, sleet, or beautiful summer weather in Port Macquarie. And it's right next to um, a koala bear sanctuary, so you can actually hold the koalas. And there's lots of... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but they're they're awake during the they're they're awake and alive, and you can hold them. I've I've held them, and um, it's it's just a great location. It's a fabulous spot. There's lots to do, lots to see. So you'd want to come and take a little bit of time to explore Australia if you haven't had the opportunity to um, come down under before. It's a fabulous, fabulous spot. So speaking as a, a foreigner to Australia, I'd urge you all to try and come if you can. So no, mark November 7th, 8th, and 9th in your calendar for, for the next OERU meeting, meeting number seven. <laughs> so that's it. Yep, and just before we wrap up, I just a, a big shout out to the eCampus Ontario team. I mean, putting together a meeting like this from afar is um, always an interesting challenge because we're in different time zones. And I have to say the team have been sterling. Uh, they anticipated every challenge we could have faced. And uh, I think uh, CSU has got a high standard 
uh, to keep up to um, next year. So I'd like to say a big, big thank you and a shout out to the, the team at eCampus Ontario. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. Thank you.